Hey, this is Dr. Willie Jolly, and I want to say greetings to everyone who is watching this, wherever you may be in the world, on this 24 Hours of Entrepreneur concept. It's getting launched, and I'm so excited about being a part of it with my friends Shea Brown and Trevor Arts, and all they're doing, I'm excited about it. So I want to th thank you for coming, and thank you for being a part of this broadcast. Yes. For those who know me, know I always start the same way. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account. If I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but our eternities are wrapped up in it. And so I'm grateful and I'm excited about this minute, this moment, this opportunity ideas with you that hopefully will help you as you're on your path to wealth building even in these challenging times you can still have a path to wealth building and i want to share some ideas with you on how to do it now let's talk about the L here which is the fact that We've been in a time of disruption. We've been in a time of change, of challenge, of crisis. But the word crisis is an interesting word. In 1959, John F. Kennedy gave a speech that has gone on to become a historic speech because he talked about the fact that the word crisis from the Chinese version of the word and definition has a distinct and dual implication that it means two almost different things at the same time. It means the word crisis in the Chinese language when it's written means great danger, but at the same time, great hidden opportunity. So while we're in the midst of danger, change, challenge, we are also in the midst of great hidden opportunity. The key is, are you willing to look for it, work for it? And I love the story in my book. Let's see, which one of the books is this in? Uh, I think it's in my book. It only takes a minute to change your life. Uh, and that was a story about the hidden diamonds. And it's a story about a farmer on a farm in Africa who kept hearing about the diamond trade. And he decided he wanted to get in the wealth that was being generated via the diamond trade. So he put an ad in his local newspaper farm for sale first off best offer a guy who was just reading the newspaper that day said let me go out here and check out this farm not that i need to buy a farm but i got nothing else to do he went out just to look at the farm and said oh what a beautiful farm lush ground and the farmer said well, i wasn't planning about what what you got i'll take it i gotta get out of here i gotta go go i gotta go he said well i only have x amount of dollars he said i'll take it and he bought it for pennies on a dollar and the farmer said i'm out and the farmer left to go look for diamonds he searched and searched and searched and searched and searched for many years for diamonds and never found one diamond after many years of searching in complete despair frustration and disgust. He went to the top of the highest cliff and threw himself over, ended his life. Back at the farm, the guy who had bought it for 10 pennies on a dollar was walking across a little waterbed and he stumped his toe in the water and a little glistened water. And he went down and there was a, a rock that was covered with mud, but there was a glisten that came out. He took a handkerchief and he scrubbed and he took a brush and he brushed the hardened mud and dirt off of it. And it was a beautiful crystal rock. He put it on his mantle. And a couple of days later, one of his friends from the city came to visit and said, oh, where did you get those? Where did you get those? There was a couple of them on there. He said, 
Oh, they're all over the place. That one, that big one is called, uh, is, is my newest one. That guy learned soon thereafter, that was called the Hope Diamond, the world has ever seen. And that land became known as Acres of Diamonds. There were diamonds all over the place. And the, and the moral of the story is that you don't have to go looking for wealth, your diamonds, they're already within you. You've gotta be willing to do is to do the work. Wash them off, clean them off, find it. Hidden, hidden wealth, hidden opportunity in the in the midst of crisis. There's some hidden opportunities right here, right now in these crisis times. If you're going to be on a program and a process of creating wealth, and that's what I want to instill and inspire and encourage you to be doing. That if you're serious about wealth building, then I'm glad you joined us here in this program online. Pause. That's where the world is going. Someone once said years ago that there was a, a CEO of a company who said, as he looked at his big mainframe computers, well, I guess this is the fullness of what computers would be able to do. Big old mainframes. He thought that was it. Well, he, he soon got fired from his board of directors because they realized that he didn't know what he was talking about. And the fact that this was a opportunity time so here's what I want to say to everybody who's watching, that this is an opportunity time, one, and two, that the internet, what we know as the internet, we are only still in the infancy stage. It's still baby. And you say, well, so much has happened. I remember, <laughs> I remember when AOL was launched. See, some of y'all too young to even remember that. I remember a time when there was no internet. I remember a time when there was no email. So when the internet was released. I remember that. And I got online. And I remember when I got my first email account with AOL. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and, and, and people were struggling to get online. But <clears throat> here's the lesson. The is that I learned about email and I learned about the internet and I'm continuing to learn. And I wanna thank Shay and Trevor because they are, they are two of my best resources for getting new ideas, new insights. So when they invited me to be a part of this, I said it'd be my pleasure because they're always going to next level. And then we'll be continue our next level if you're willing to do the work and search for the opportunities. So the word crisis, we're in a time of crisis, but this is a great time, time of opportunity. In my books, uh, two of my books, many people know, a setback is a setup for a comeback. In this book, I talk about the fact that wherever there is a setback, there is always an opportunity. And you just gotta be willing to watch for it, look for it and, and develop it. Develop that opportunity. I, that book was written because of my story of being a nightclub singer who was singing jingles for Pizza Hut, making it great, and BET, Black Entertainment TV, doing that during the day. But the majority of my being made by my nightclub act that I did Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, two shows a night, standing room only audiences. It was packed out. I was making money. And one night the club owner said, We love your band. You are great, but we decided to try something different. We bought a karaoke machine because it's a lot cheaper. I said, well, what about my bills? And I learned that night, nobody really cares about your bills, but you and the people you owe. And I was devastated. I didn't know what to do with me. A cassette motivational tape. Some of y'all don't even know what a cassette looks like. Uh, let's see. I got a couple of cassettes right here. This is a cassette. <laughs> this is one of my early cassettes. A real deal about the three little pigs. This is a cassette in Les Brown on the... Les Brown Dream Team Tour. I still keep some of the cassettes around them. Remind me of from whence I've come. And then from the cassettes, we went to the CDs. And then, and, and then from there to the DVDs. And I mean, I got stuff. I got stuff. Anyway, I'm back to that. I, I, I like all of this stuff I got. Anyway, um, so from, from that cassette, it was a motivational tape. And a guy on that tape 
Charlie Tremendous Jones said, you'll be the same person you are today in five years, except for two things. The people you meet who inspire you and the books you read that empower you. Really? Yep. And then that same friend who gave me that motivational tape gave me a book called Think and Grow Rich. I never read a motivational book. In fact, I barely read any books. I was, I was the half of the class in high school that made the top half possible. So I wasn't into reading and working on myself. No, I, I skated through college. But it was then when I listened to that tape and I listened to it over and over and over again. And I, I started reading that book, thinking real rich, that my thinking changed. And I realized that this setback of getting fired was an opportunity. And that wherever, as in Thinking Grow Rich, it says, wherever there is an adversity, there's an equal or greater opportunity that I, I just had to look. And that's when my thinking shifted. I took a job with the Washington, D.C. public school system as a drug prevention coordinator, talking to little kids about staying away from drugs. And it was during that year I discovered an ability I didn't know I had to use words to communicate from the little kids. The teachers would say, can you teachers group? And someone from the teachers group would say, can you come to my church? And someone at the church would say, can you come to my company? And continue to grow. And one day I'm speaking to a small group in a small hotel room, but down the hallway that night in the big ballroom was gonna be a motivational rally. And while I'm speaking to that small group, about 20 people, the door was open. One of the speakers from that night's rally was walking by that room to go to the ballroom to check it out. His name was Les Brown. He stood outside and heard my message and came in and said, I love your message. I love the way you speak. I love the fact that you speak and sing and you put it all together. I'm putting together a tour called the Music Motivation Dream Team Tour. You'd be the perfect opening act. Are you interested? I said, yes, I am. And a few months later, we kicked off the Les Brown Music and Motivation Dream Team, which featured Les Brown, Billy Preston, Gladys Knight, and a little guy from Washington, D.C., me. Because of Les and Gladys, they introduced me to some radio people. And I got a little radio show. And the radio show got popular and then got syndicated. You can now hear me every week on Sirius XM Radio. Uh, with the number one self-help show in America on uh, channel 141 with the Willie Jolly Wealthy Way show, which is also now a popular podcast on iHeartRadio and C-Suite and Spotify and TuneIn. And then you can also hear me on my daily radio show on the Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell morning show on the Praise Network every morning at 820 Eastern Time and 720 Central Time with the Wake Up and Win with Dr. Willie Jolly. Show and if you better, you get a daily newsletter video from me to empower you and encourage you and inspire you. Well, all the media stuff started happening, and then a book publisher heard me on the radio and called my office and said, "Have you ever thought about writing a book?" I said, "No, I never thought about writing a book. I barely was reading books before I started reading Thinking Real Rich and and Empower." Positive Thinking and, and Richard Man in Babylon and, and all of these other books. He said, well, I, I love your thinking on the radio. I'd love to know if you'd be interested in writing a book. And he made me an offer. I said, I just thought about it. <laughs> so my first book came out. It called It Only Takes a Minute to Change Your Life. Became a national bestseller. Then my second book came out, uh, Setback. is a set of comeback. And then my third book turned setbacks into greenbacks. Then my fourth book, An Attitude of us. Then my fifth book, Make love, make money, make it last. Then my music CDs and DVDs and audios and videos and PBS specials. And all of that started happening because I changed my thinking in the midst of a setback. I hope today that you will look at these challenging time opportunities. There's some incredible opportunity going to come out of this. In, in, in my book, Turn Setbacks into Greenbacks, I talk about in the 1930s, during the Great Depression, many people were starving on soup lines, unable to feed their families. Unemployment was an all-time high. But there were some people in that midst of that time who millionaires. And one of those stories I really love out of the book that is... Charles Darrow. You might not know Charles Darrow's name, but you certainly know his invention. During the Great Depression, when other people were losing all they had, Mr. Darrow thought about new ideas. And he created a 
board game called Monopoly that we still play today. He worked on his idea for the board game to help, help people feel that they were empowered and rich, even in tough times. Within a year of the game being released, it sold more than 20,000 units and went on to sell thousands and thousands more over the next few years, and he became a multi-millionaire. I'm saying to you, this is a time of opportunity. So if you're going to win in this time, you got to look at this setback to create wealth, you got to turn it into a comeback. What does it start with? Your thinking. Mindset. Your thinking determines everything else. And then what are you trying to achieve during these times? Now, in that same book, Turn Setbacks into Greenbacks, I give seven principles that help you go from financial disaster to financial freedom. And in this are the people, or some of the people I interviewed in my XM show who went from being broke, busted, and disgusted to multimillionaires and even billionaires. And they tell the same principles, just in different stories. They use different methods to get to their wealth, but they relied on the principles because principles work over and over again. If I throw a rock in the air, the principle of gravity is bring it back down. You have to know that there are principles for wealth building. I love this little quote. Methods are many. Principles are few. Methods may change, but principles never do. Some people will make their money via the internet. Some will make it with methods, different methods. But all the principles will be the same. Here are a couple of the principles that will help you to create wealth in your life. One is that you must always have a vision for where you're going, even in tough times. Now, in the turn setbacks into greenbacks, I talk about when you're in tough moments, you must keep one eye on the situation you're in and one eye on the bigger vision. Case in point, if you take a look at a great golfer in a golf tournament, let's say Tiger Woods in the Masters, and let's say he's at the tee box and he's the golf ball and he hits a bad shot and it ends up over in the woods, gets all the way over in the woods. Now he's still got to play that shot or lose strokes. So let's say he finds the ball. Now, what does he do now? Does he panic and go crazy and start whacking at the ball just crazily? No, no, no. The wise golfers handle this problem while I'm here so I can get back to his first plan must be one eye on the problem. I got to get out of here. Or he might be in a sand trap. I got to get out of here so I can get back in the, on the winning track. So he'll hit it back in the fairway because that's the goal is get it one eye on the problem. But one eye always on winning the tournament. I got to win the tournament. Now I've got that out of that problem. Let's attack the tournament. So what are your goals? What are your, what are your goals? See, get through the crisis moments, the challenging times, the difficult moments. But I want to say that's short-sighted. That is not enough. I'm thinking about one eye on my problems, the challenges, but one eye on the big goals. I got, if, if you could see my, my wall over, here goal that I have on a wall but here's the thing it's not a one day goal not a one month goal it's not a one year goal I've got a decade goal right here why because at the beginning of this year i would never done before and Shay was actually there to be a part of it I had my goal setting seminar that I do every year. And during that seminar every year, I've done it for almost 30 years. I will help people with their goal setting so that they can improve their lot in that year. This year though, my thinking expanded, my thinking grew, my thinking developed. And I said, 
You know what, folks? First of all, you got to understand about what the real deal is about wealth and how we've got to think differently and set goals differently if we want to really talk about real deal, generational wealth. See, we often talk about people being wealthy when they're not really wealthy. And I realized there were five levels of about money. So you better get with me on this one because I'm about to throw it down. You're going to want this. This is my next book. The book will be ready. It's called The Real Deal About Generational Wealth. It's coming out real soon. You got to stay connected to me. In fact, I want to give it away to everybody before I do this, tell you about this. So you stay connected to me and I can give you a little gift. I told you that book, Think and Grow Rich and Audios Changed My Life. It's people you meet who inspire you, the books you read that empower you. I want to give everybody a copy of the book, Think and Grow Rich, a digital copy, who's watching right now, my gift to you, because someone gave it to me. And someone gave me audios that changed my life. I want to give them to you like somebody blessed me. So if you'll go to willyjolly.com slash gift, either willyjolly.com slash gift or wjspeaks.com slash gift, either one will get you there you'll get a digital download of Think and Grow Rich as well as some audios. You'll get access to some of my, my, my favorite XM interviews that changed my life. Wally Famous Amos, Bob Johnson, founder of BET, uh, Damon John from Shark Tank. Some of my favorite interviews are, are gonna be my gift to you. The people you meet who inspire you, you don't have to meet them in person, and the books you read that empower you. I'm gonna give you the book to change my life Think and Grow Rich, my gift to you. And how did I give it away? Because I was one of the 53 thought leaders from the Napoleon Hill Foundation some years ago when we celebrated his impact on the world. And as a result of that, I was able to give that to my friends. You are now my friends. So go to wjspeaks.com slash gift or willyjolly.com slash gift to get that. Now, this whole process is going to be part of my new book and the new book will be promoted on the, my newsletter. And then once you sign up for the newsletter, you also get my daily positive messaging to help your thinking grow. Here are the five wealth ways of thinking that are gonna impact your life. Five ways of thinking about wealth. Number one, the first level of thinking about wealth is the indigent. The indigent think day to day. They stand on a corner with a sign saying, can you give me enough money to get some food today? And the next day they do the exact same thing. Can somebody, they're thinking day to day. The poor think month to month. Did I get my welfare check? Did I get my SNAP payment? And every month that is their thinking, one month to one month to one month. Then the middle class think year to year. Did I get a raise this year? Did I get a cost of living increase this year? And every year they're thinking, did I make a little more this year than I made last year? The rich think decade to decade. We see that most, most presently in athletes who might get a 10-year contract, $100 million. And they play that 10 years and then their career might be over. But they got that $100 million. That's great. But then there's another that I want us to think about. And that's where my thinking changed. It's the wealthy. The wealthy think generation to generation to generation. The wealthy are thinking about their children's 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 grandchildren. I love this quote T.D. Jakes said, give a man a fish he eats for a day. Teach him the fish he eats for a lifetime. But if you can teach him to buy the pond, his great children will be able to eat. That's when my thinking has expanded over the last couple of years. And so someone asked me in an interview, Willie Jolly, what's your biggest goal? It didn't take me but a minute to give it to him. My biggest goal is that 100 years from now, some child will walk into a room and see a picture of me and my wife and run up to her and say, thank you, great, 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 great granddaddy and grandmama for what y'all did. 
to allow us to have a business, to allow us to have a college education, a home, to allow us what you established 100 years ago. That's the thinking that real wealth building is going to take. And that real wealth building is going to be necessitated by not by what you do. Come on now. Come on, watch with me now. It's not about what you do. It's what you own. If you're going to be a real wealthy person, not by what you do. It's about what you own. See, let's say you're a great singer. Pavarotti. But if your children, what happens to the wealth? When you die, when the gift ends, when the talent ceases, the money. But if you owned the record company, then it changes. See, LeBron James, I like the one thing I like about LeBron, he's not settling for just being a great basketball player. He's creating production companies and film companies and, and, and creating business units that can be passed on. Because that is, he knew that one day his basketball was going to end. We know so many athletes who sign $100 million contracts, who make millions of dollars over that decade, and sometimes a little more than a decade. But when that playing day is over, the income generation ends. And we know that over 70% of professional athletes are broke five years after retirement because they did not have a way to continue that income after it was over. So I'm saying to you, it's time to think next generational wealth. And it's not what you do, it's what you own. The shift in our programming of our goal setting. So this year, I didn't do what I'd done in the past to teach people to have, have a better year because my thinking expanded. I'm now on my role, have set my goal for this decade. I want to be it by December 29th, December, I'm sorry, December 31st, 2029. I'll have under that my legacy goal. So I know what I want to do for my children's children's children children's great grandchildren. If you want to get access, by the way, to that goal setting seminar, I want to encourage you to go get that, particularly when you got time, when you're not busy, you and your family, sit down, watch, go through that seminar, do the, you can get it at uh, willyjolly.com slash win, W-I-N, willyjolly.com slash win. Go get that seminar. It's, I think it's the most profound seminar I've ever done. So wealth building, is about starting with your thinking. If you change your thinking, you'll change your actions. And you change your actions, you'll change your results. Let's go back to where we started. Crisis. Great danger, but great opportunity. You'll also find a great or greater opportunity. The key is, how are you looking at the world? I look at the world with an attitude of gratitude. I look at the world with an excitement and expectancy that my best is yet to come. So I'll close with two things. One, if you want to get some of my resources, which I highly recommend you get, go to wjspeaks.com slash success. wjspeaks.com slash success. You'll have an option there to get a digital package of my book so you can download it. I mean, really reasonable price. Or you can get a physical of all my books. And if you buy five, you get one thrown in free, a sixth product. Or you can get what my friend Shane Brown likes, my, my box. My Willie Jolly, wow, wow, wow box. Wealthy ways to help you win. Powerful products to help you grow your faith, your future, and your finances. Woo! Go there and you get it at a discounted price. So go to wjspeaks.com slash success or willyjolly.com slash success. So let's say if I, you've gotten, I've given you three things I want you to do. Go get the Think and Grow Rich 
and the audios from my XM show that changed my life at wjspeaks.com slash gift or willyjolly.com slash gift. Go get the goal setting seminar at willyjolly.com slash win because I want you to win. How many want to win this year and this decade and in this lifetime? You got to have goals that help you win. I'm going to help you get there. So willyjolly.com slash win. And then if you want some of my resources, which I highly recommend you get and you share them with people in your network, make sure that the people you hang around are growing. Then you will grow. And so you go to, <coughs> excuse me, willyjolly.com slash success or wjspeaks.com slash success. Close with my favorite story, Shay Brown's favorite story. I was a new speaker. I had no books, no tapes, no radio, no television, no credentials, no credentials to be a speaker. Struggling to keep the lights on, the phones on, struggling to keep things moving. It was tough. I'd make sales calls. People say, I don't know who you are. I'd hang up in my face. I had to get discouraged. Wouldn't make any more calls that day. Usually it take me a day or two to get my dander back up after being discouraged and getting rejected. Anybody ever been rejected and get fear that kick in the gut? I make my first call and a guy says, I like the way you talk. Okay, I'm meeting. I actually need a speaker. It's going to be in Orlando, Florida. I'll fly you down. I'll pay you. He told me to budget. I said, whoa, yes, I can do that. I flew down to Orlando. I gave the speech. They gave me a standing ovation. I had it. Finished meeting and greeting people and went on back to the airport to fly home. Feeling good. Got in my seat. Plane took off. Feeling good. I took out that check a second time. But when I looked at the check the second time, I got depressed because that money was already allocated. I owed the water company, the electric company, the gas company. The, I mean, I, it was all reality. Okay, anybody ever get your check before you get home, you know it's gone. I started having a pity party with myself right there in B-22. An older gentleman across the aisle must have sensed I was struggling. He struck up a conversation with me. He told me he was a minister. He lectured every day in a different city about health and wealth. I said, you fly every day? He said, yes. I said, you speak every day? He said, yes. We spoke for a few more minutes. Then he asked me a question that changed the trajectory of my future. He said, young man, how do you think, how old do you think I am? I looked him up and down. I said, sir, I think you're about 60. He smiled. He took off his glasses. He looked me dead in the eye. He said, young man, I'm 88 years old. I'm eight and my best is yet to come. In that moment, everything shifted in my head. If an 88 year old man could have the optimism to believe that his best days were in front of him and not behind him, what did I have to whine and cry and complain about? And I went home with a new attitude and I got on that phone and started making sales calls. And if people say no, I'd say next. And they say, I'm not interested in what you got. I said, thank you. You're not the right one. Well, 25 years, well, actually, all 30 years have gone by. I've been inducted in Speaker Hall of Fame. I've been named one of the top five speakers in the world. I've been named a speaker of the year by the 175,000 members of Toastmasters International. I've been named a legend of the speaking industry. I've been named one of the top five leadership speakers in the world. I, and all of that is just the tip of the iceberg because I got something to tell you that I say to myself, for sure, your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Go out of here now and go from this place with a new spirit of entrepreneurism. Go out of this place with a new spirit of activity and excellence. Be outstanding. Stand out from the crowd and be all you can be. Give all that you got on a daily basis and that your best is still yet to come. You have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. It's forced upon you. You can't refuse it. You didn't seek it. You didn't choose it, but it's up to you to use it. You must suffer if you lose it. Give account if you abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but your eternities are wrapped up in it. Take, take this crisis on. Deal with the danger, but know, know that there's a great opportunity if you're willing to work and develop it. This is Dr. Willie Jolly. Please visit me at my website. Please get some of the free, free, free resources, some of the other resources. And please stay connected with me because I want to hear your stories about how you created greatness out of crisis situations. This is Dr. Willie Jolly. Have a great 
your day. Stay blessed and highly favored. And remember, your best is yet to come. God bless you.